Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm trying to go with why I think he was arguably yeah, super coherent. Was that it's not, it pertains to the divine nature, but it is not the divine nature in terms of its attributes themselves, which were um, given off whatever. So, what is it? But it is the divine privileges, which, which seems to be referring to these things which God is owed by, na by virtue of his divine nature and attributes. So, they're not the same thing. So, it's divine. And this is, by the way, I'm not, I'm not asserting this, right? I'm hypothesizing, just to clarify. So, it would be the divine nature and his attributes are one thing, and the divine privileges are the things to which God is owed by virtue of his divine nature and attributes. And the idea is that Jesus. And although the necessary attributes were not given up, it was the sure, yeah, acquired yeah. attributes which were given up. Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm are you saying, saying that the privileges which are owed to God by virtue of him having Give me an divine, example so I can understand. Uh, Give me something specific. Which privilege, which is divine, that he gave up? Uh, I think maybe something like uh, uh, obedience or worship. Kind of knowledge. Knowledge. Sorry, obedience or worship? Obedience or worship. Okay, yeah. you know, he's, I asked him this specifically whether someone worthy of worship is that a necessary attribute of this? Yeah, that's one thing I'm not, I'm not sure I. So it cannot be worship? No, I don't know. As in, I'm not sure I. And you know what worship entails? Wait, wait, can, glory. Like, like, like quickly, so he were, must have given up his glory. That, that point you were making earlier, I'm not yeah. sure I understood or necessarily agreed with Josh there. Just because I perhaps we understood the ideas of worship differently, but I kind of seem to understand that worship seems to be more of an acquired, if we're going to call it property, it seems to be more of an acquired property because you would require agents to worship you, right? As in, when we talk about so worship. You're, so you're property, saying God is not worthy of worship unless someone worship in other words that's what you say no this is the thing so this is where it gets confusing no, no, exactly no no as in i'm saying but that's what it entails in this no, no, wait, 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 can, I, can i explain that like, like, the point is that i'm unsure there's two there's, there's two different ways of kind of understanding this right i'm saying that god is intrinsically worthy of worship in that his worthy of worshipness, if we can call that a property, is always there because he's always part of the good and he's always divine, all that kind of stuff, right? That's one thing. But when we're talking about worship as an ability, something that can actually be performed, that requires the contingent humans being actualized and therefore it will be an acquired property. So it just depends which way we're understanding. It. When you say intrinsic property of his, uh, sorry, his, uh, he has this divine privilege of being worshipped, yes? In, in, order, in order for an agent to worship him, he should first have this ability to be, sorry, not ability, he should have this intrinsic nature of being worthy of worship. You see what I mean? Yeah. So an agent I cannot understand. worship someone, for example, this tree, unless that tree is worthy of worship. They and cannot, by the way, you can surprise that some certain religions will do, do that. Yeah, yeah, they cannot justify yes. it. Exactly. So what I'm saying is that for, for an entity to be worshipped, it has to be worthy of worship. Yeah, yeah. So what I mean? So this is an intrinsic nature of, uh, of God. That means, is it a necessary attribute of God? Or is it an acquired attribute of God? Okay, so, so this is what I'm saying. I'm saying, first of all, I don't think being worthy of worship is necessarily a property. Um, in a sense, in the sense that we might disagree on this, but I so think you think it's acquired. No, no, Until no, no. someone worships him, no, you're not worthy of not, worship. Not even an acquired acquisition. Point, just before you get onto that, is that in, isn't that part of the definition of God? No, no, no. no. Being which is worthy of worship. I'm not sure. As in, I think perhaps if we, as in, I think you could say that, and it would be true. But I think it's not the most basic, or fundamental way of explaining it. So I say, who's defining? Wait, wait, wait. What, can what, I, what, can what, I just quickly do it. Okay. As in, it's interesting. When we, say worthy, when we say worthy of worship, mm -hmm. that's predicated on the nature of who God is. He's worthy to wor uh, worship because who God is is worthy of worship, right? And therefore, I'm saying it's more fundamental to say who is God. God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipotent. Right? That's why. That's Uncaused and independent. Why do you know that? Because you know it doesn't work with your beliefs. No, anyway, my point is, is that I think it's more accurate and fundamental to say these are God's properties rather than saying worthy of worship is a property. I think you look, could say it, but I just don't think it's look more at it, accurate. Listen, if someone is omnipotent, yep. then automatically that person is worthy of worship. You cannot have it any other way. It has to be. It is, it is a necessary, what do you say, um, interpretation of an omnipotent God. When a God is omnipotent, he is automatically worthy of worship. But if someone if someone empties himself of that nature of omnipotence, of that nature of being worthy of worship, of his glory even, yes, then that is not God Almighty we're talking about. We're talking about something else. Okay, I need to do. And that is where Philippians 2.6 is actually an argument against 
Trinitarians rather than four Trinitarians. And this is where I say, I need to, I need to go. I need to go. It's been nice. It's been nice talking to you, Luca. Being Muslims for giving Islam. I have to go. It's been nice talking to you. Yeah, likewise. I think we should wrap it up. But I mean, we only ask you to, as you're investigating and researching, research more. Think about the maximally perfect being. Sure. Who is really worthy of putting God and worthy of worship? Islam provides an alternative model, and I explained to you in Surah Al-Ikhlas, gives you that model in which it actually fundamentally and you know totally goes against the belief that Christians are coming up with. In fact, it may be actually engaging with the Christians. I may say so. Where you know it is saying God is not something that He begets or He, he, he is begotten Himself. All right, uniquely independent. He's yeah, totally unique and unlike and, 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 yeah. and importantly, he's self-sufficient. We consider, I mean, if you think it's not something, you know, easily understandable, you know, as an intuitive way, that a being worthy of worship needs to be self-sufficient, then, I mean, I don't know why, you know, even you have all these formulations of, uh, you know, from philosophers, maybe the, the Christian doctrinal bias is making them to formulate again and again these kind of doctrines of what the Father is necessarily someone who begets or someone who possesses the Son and, the, and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's just to get away from the difficulty of what the Trinity entails okay. more than one God or Hashem. Can I quickly just say? Yeah. Uh, one point is, I'd say, please also likewise look and understand contemporary and See, I'm not saying it just has to be contemporary. But what is the foremost scholarship on philosophers of religion? Right? And if they're Christian, you, I, I understand that you're saying, oh, they're, they're biased and so on and so forth. But as in, it's not really fair to say, oh, just because they're Christian, I'm going to dismiss their points and not look at them intrinsically. I'm saying there, there's a reason why they are at the top of their field. They're coming up from a tradition of all of this argumentation, to, from need, a Christian wait, baggage. Wait, wait, wait. You need to give them their due and deal with their arguments intrinsically rather than just saying, okay, because they're Christian, I'm going to dismiss them. Anyhow, also I just want to make a general point. We obviously we disagree with you, but more just a general point about speakers for the dialogue. Uh, we don't have to hate each other or anything. We can intellectually disagree and passionately so, but we don't have to harbor any ill will against each other. And that's just the way we need to move forward with a lot of these debates and discussions. Like, absolutely. And have you have you experienced that here? What as in intellectual? Did you, did you feel hatred? No, no, I don't feel hatred. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a general point. <laughs> moving forward, we need more intellectual disagreement, more productive, productive discussions, stuff. dialogue, and that's just going to be some I totally agree. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Take care. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. How long is it? Uh, it's too long. Yes. I didn't take it because of that. See you all. See you all. See you all. I will take everything. I can't even see.